Uh, my name is uh, Pavlo Ardanov. I am co-founder and deputy head of the NGO Permaculture in Ukraine. Uh, I am also a researcher at the Leibniz Center for Agricultural and Landscape Research. And finally, I am docent at the Open International University of Human Development Ukraine, where I am uh, teaching the course Agrobiodiversity and Design of Crop Polycultures. The uh, adapted lectures from this course will be uh, presented uh, to you. Um, so as, as I already mentioned earlier, I'm uh, working on developing a uh, uh, an algorithm and uh, decision uh, support uh, tools for growers. So when I reviewed the literature to understand these uh, processes and functions, I uh, uh, conducted, constructed this uh, custom uh, course, which you can now uh, see. Uh, so <clears throat> What, what is polyculture? Polyculture means uh, simultaneous uh, cultivation of uh, several uh, uh, crops at uh, one piece of uh, land. Uh, in uh, my context, uh, I uh, refer to different kind of beneficial uh, crop interactions uh, possible, uh, uh, ranging from uh, uh, simultaneous intercropping, uh, uh, Ущільнені uh, посадки або одночасне змішування культур. I shall uh, uh, apologize or uh, inform you that I will try to speak uh, terms at the first use in both uh, Ukrainian and English uh, language, that it will be easier for our interpreters. So starting from simultaneous intercropping up to crop rotation and early cropping, uh, uh, combination of uh, uh, tree crops with herbaceous crops, and even up to crop integration with uh, livestock. Uh, so, as you probably know, uh, polycultures are uh, uh, beneficial for environment and also more productive. Here I could refer you the results from the meta-analysis, analysis of about 1,000 observations. And in general, one third of these observations uh, showed higher productivity of uh, yield, biomass on less uh, uh, land. Uh, and also uh, uh, polycultures uh, uh, better utilize resources, either uh, soil nutrients or uh, light, uh, or better resists uh, pests, uh, weeds, and diseases. But it's not only benefits of the polycultures. They also are capable to provide more uh, nutritious food. Uh, you can better utilize local resources, uh, whatever uh, soil and climate you have, you can design polyculture suitable for these particular conditions. And also you can possibly reach a higher economic uh, stability, especially if you grow uh, crops whose uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, prices uh, uh, are not uh, correlated uh, for these crops if the prices uh, uh, fluctuations are not correlated. And also, of course, more social equity when you have more control on decision over your farming system rather than big uh, uh, corporations uh, who buy the staple crops. Um, So, um, but when we are talking about polycultures, uh, it's not only the set and diversity of species. More important is the functional diversity or diversity of functions which these crops can uh, uh, perform. And also uh, 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 the distribution of uh, these functions uh, across time and uh, space. Um, and uh, also uh, uh, you can see these benefits, as I mentioned, when one third of observations have higher productivity, especially if you move from 
very species poor monoculture system into the uh, diverse uh, polyculture uh, system. So there are two processes which are important. One is a functional diversity, diversity of different functions performed by this crop. Another, as we all very good know from permaculture, is functional redundancy, funkcine dublyvanie, which means that uh, if we have several species performing the same function, our system become more resilient. And because the species are not like totally 100% identical, most likely that they will have better tolerance to uh, specific uh, conditions. Let's say one uh, nitrogen fixing species will be more drought tolerant, and then you will have this function despite of this environmental uh, fluctuation. In ecology, which we often refer when designing our cropping system, we know that uh, the uh, positive relation between diversity and function functionality uh, uh, maintains up to five and 15 species. If you increase this number further, you might end up with the same average productivity, but resilience of your system will be higher because of functional uh, redundancy. And this is called insurance hypothesis of uh, biodiversity. So moving to uh, processes which uh, which explains uh, uh, better uh, performance and higher productivity of polyculture. The first one is uh, uh, called uh, uh, niche uh, complementarity uh, or funkcine uh, wzajemodopolnenia. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, means uh, that uh, species uh, uh, of um, different uh, Plants of different species often use uh, different resources, or uh, if they use the same resources, they use them at different uh, time or at a different uh, spatial layer. Uh, let's say they have a different height of their crowns or different depths of their uh, root uh, systems. Uh, I think that uh, everyone well knows that the highest competition is between uh, individual uh, of uh, the same uh, species. Uh, there are some exceptions of that in case of uh, mycorrhizal species when survival of young plants is better next to adult of the uh, same species. And as I mentioned, uh, there is uh, uh, temporal complementarity in time, spatial, in space, as well as chemical complementarity, where plants use different uh, uh, nutrient uh, form of nutrients. And uh, often uh, uh, all these three forms of complementarity act together. Uh, but uh, it, if any two species have complementary relationships, it does not mean that there is no any competition between these two species. Often these two processes act in parallel and we always search for balance where positive interaction outperform the negative interaction. Even sometimes uh, the switch uh, from competition into complementarity uh, uh, occur uh, in the life uh, span of your cropping system. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, uh, cereal legume intercropping, uh, uh, I, in, uh, for young legumes uh, who does not have uh, the uh, nodules uh, uh, or bulba shock yet uh, for nitrogen uh, fixation, uh, there is a competition with uh, uh, cereal for nitrogen. Uh, but later, uh, of course, uh, uh, legume, uh, bobova cultura, develops the capacity to uh, fix nitrogen. And this is actually a very uh, good example of this uh, complementarity in uh, the system called uh, relay cropping, about uh, estafetna uh, posadka. Uh, 
эстафетна поликультурна система. Where you saw clover in spring under the winter wheat. So until we so clover develop slowly during the lifespan of wheat. When we harvest wheat, clover start developing faster. So this way we avoid competition. Uh, but uh, establish complementarity between these two crops. Um, uh, so uh, uh, often uh, uh, we call about niche complementarity uh, where uh, uh, species complement each other in uh, using uh, uh, resources. Uh, sorry. Um, here, actually, I wanted to say that competition, in fact, can lead to uh, uh, complementarity uh, between the intercropped plants. For example, it is known that uh, uh, barley uh, root system uh, uh, grows in deeper soil layer when intercropped with pea uh, uh, than uh, uh, compared with monoculture situation. And the same situation observed in agroforestry, simultaneous cultivation of uh, tree crops uh, and um, uh, herbaceous crops, uh, in particular uh, 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 growing um, for example, winter wheat in alleys between walnut, uh, young walnut seedlings. In this situation, walnut develop deeper root system because of the competition, and later on, adult walnut trees are capable to reach uh, groundwater and uh, uh, become more uh, resilient to uh, uh, drought. Uh, or, uh, well, very well known. Um, polyculture system, which is called three sister uh, combination of maize, bean and squash. So talking about uh, root systems, when these uh, crops grow together, they develop more lateral or, or uh, 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 roots. And here you can see very well uh, the example of uh, complementarity of above, uh, of uh, plant uh, shoots. Uh, uh, this is uh, intercropping uh, of um, uh, wheat uh, uh, and pea. And you, you can see that an ideal uh, combination, uh, complementary uh, combination of shoot architecture would be uh, uh, when one a tall crop with uh, narrow uh, and erect leaves is uh, combined with uh, uh, lower stature uh, crops uh, with uh, 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 pro prostrate uh, or uh, stelushisa uh, or wide uh, uh, leaves. So uh, uh, now we reviewed the first process, uh, which is called complementarity. So uh, uh, comment complementarity simply refers to resource partitioning. It's not, uh, uh, I mean that it's not when one species provides something for another. It's just that they use different resources. But there is more positive also interaction in uh, intercro in uh, polycultures, which is uh, called ecological uh, facilitation or funkcine spriyanya. Uh, so uh, in this uh, situation, one crop uh, makes uh, resources uh, more available or uh, the microclimate more uh, favorable for another crop. And interestingly, uh, facilitation is more uh, pronounced in the harsh environmental conditions, uh, for example, on less fertile soil to reach the maximum productivity of biomass, you need a higher diversity of crops just to sustain in this environment because one crop make resources available and another crop just use these resources. So actually, if you end up with unfertile soil, you may consider it as an opportunity to develop a really rich and uh, multi-species uh, uh, polyculture 
uh, system. Uh, for example, one example is uh, uh, facilitation of uh, phosphorus uh, availability uh, by uh, uh, legume, which is more uh, pronounced on uh, uh, alkaline or neutral uh, uh, soil. Um, in case of this phosphorus uh, facilitation, uh, and in uh, yeah, in particular for phosphorus facilitation, because for, uh, you may know that phosphorus is a uh, low mobile uh, nutrient. It uh, readily um, binds to soil particles, so it does not uh, uh, become available after you harvest the previous crop. Uh, uh, nitrogen uh, is the opposite situation. Uh, so in, if you need to establish uh, phosphorus uh, facilitation, you need a direct root contact uh, uh, between uh, two crops. And again, uh, all these three processes, which we already mentioned, uh, uh, complementarity, facilitation, and competition, they often occur uh, uh, simultaneously. So for example, uh, a cereal, uh, can actually foster uh, legume to fix more uh, nitrogen than in monocropping situation. So uh, better fixation in polyculture actually by uh, uh, legume. Uh, and uh, 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 in uh, addition to uh, nitrogen fixation, as we already uh, mentioned, that uh, legume also uh, facilitate uh, phosphorus uh, nutrition for the cereal crop. Facilitation can uh, be uh, uh, direct or with direct mechanisms uh, uh, when one crop change environmental conditions or uh, change the substrate uh, characteristics uh, or availability of particular resource. But uh, also very interesting situations that it could be indirect uh, uh, fa facilitation. So for example, when one crop eliminate uh, a competitor or introduce beneficial organisms, including uh, both uh, biocontrol insects and bacteria, uh, mycorrhiza, uh, pollinators, uh, or even provide some uh, associated protection from herbivores. In this example, with the uh, rows of uh, sunflower planted across uh, of a vegetable field. It's a very interesting example of this indirect facilitation. Uh, when you uh, create uh, with this uh, tall sunflower with wide leaves, more heterogeneous uh, systems where uh, um, birds can uh, perch under uh, wide leaves uh, of sunflower, and it's better to um, hunt for uh, predators, uh, for your pests uh, uh, in these uh, conditions, but also it's better uh, for them to hide from their own predators. And moreover, in these systems, uh, uh, e uh, you can get this biocontrol benefit not from the usual garden birds, but also from some forest bird species that just does not let's say, feel comfortable in this open environment, they need more heterogeneous forest-like environment. How do we translate these uh, processes into our design? For that, we use a functional uh, trait ecology, ecologia funkcijnych rys. Uh, in this uh, science or in this uh, field, the interaction of a species is uh, predicted as a function or as a result of the physiological, morphological, uh, chemical or phenological, which is related to timing uh, characteristics. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what, whatever tool for designing a cropping system you use, you often uh, find some uh, traits. Uh, for example, it's maximum plant characteristics, type of root system, um, some functional characteristic of this uh, root system, some reproductive uh, uh, traits. And uh, also, uh, as previously, th there are direct trade effects and indirect trade effects. One example of this indirect trade effects is 
when the uh, presence of spider has a negative effect on a grasshopper, uh, 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 because uh, grasshoppers uh, need to uh, hide uh, in the system where uh, um, spiders are present and therefore they consume uh, less uh, plants or less crops. So it's not uh, only attributed to uh, predation, but also by this uh, indirect effect. Uh, and here is another example uh, which shows uh, a benefit of this trade-based approach. If you know only the body size and nesting habitat of your insect, this you can already quite well predict pest suppression in your system, rather than if you just know the uh, species identity of your insects, beneficial insects. Um, so, uh, like uh, as an uh, uh, um, again easy uh, conversion, this system to practice, you can uh, design uh, mixtures with complementary structural and uh, functional uh, traits. For example, combining fast-growing and slow-growing species, short-lived and long-lived species, uh, light-demanding and sh shade-tolerant, uh, shallow-rooted and deep-rooted, uh, nitrogen-fixing and non-nitrogen-fixing uh, species with slim chrome and uh, with uh, uh, more white uh, uh, chrome. Uh, uh, but also it's important to uh, consider uh, this uh, uh, trade interaction in uh, dynamic. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, uh, the situation of under sowing or pizzatka, when you uh, so uh, uh, other uh, crops uh, in the stand uh, uh, of the previous uh, crops, uh, the crops which is under sown uh, sh should be able to tolerate uh, uh, shade uh, uh, at the uh, early developmental stage, which means that if you design uh, this uh, relay cropping or system estafet no iposatki, the under sown crops should grow slowly at uh, the early uh, developmental stage. So um, also like an easy um, conversion of this trait uh, approach is uh, uh, grouping uh, species to life forms. Here you can see uh, three dominant uh, groups uh, of uh, families of crops used in agriculture. And you can see that both uh, legumes and uh, cereals are mycorrhizal crops, meaning that uh, they could uh, uh, sustain the rotation or the, <coughs> the intercropping can sustain mycorrhization or mycorrhizal uh, existence in your soil while uh, Brassicaceae or Hrestotsvitni uh, are neither mycorrhizal nor the nitrogen fixing crops and they could even negatively uh, affect mycorrhiza development but uh, often in uh, rotation uh, or as cover crops the Brassicaceae crops are used specifically for controlling uh, pests and diseases because of uh, they reach uh, secondary uh, metabolites. And now uh, I have a question uh, to you. Uh, we can have like a brief discussion. Uh, how to increase positive interaction such as complementarity and facilitation and decrease negative interaction uh, competition uh, between crops and polycultures if the, this particular uh, pair or combination of crops express both uh, positive and negative interactions. Can you please close the door? If you can close the door. Is there anyone uh, has any ideas? Uh, someone commented in the chat. I think that it's uh, okay. Or maybe maybe then as, as you facilitate, maybe you, you can uh, read from the chat and uh, if someone would like to speak up, uh, just uh, speak up. 
I would love to read it, but it's in Ukrainian, so... Ah, in Ukrainian, okay. If I could yes, add... Yes, please, go, go ahead. It says garlic and strawberries. Those are really well-known um, crops that complement each other. The garlic uh, guards uh, strawberries from the pests. That is why uh, we usually plant garlic between the rows of strawberries. And they, they complement each other. There is no uh, negativity between them. The same goes for grapes in between the uh, rows of strawberries. It, it gives you, on the one hand, uh, a way to zone. Plus, strawberries, they are kind of a mulch for the grapes. If I understand your question correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Alexander. But I, uh, th this is very good examples which you uh, presented. But this refers to uh, crop combinations uh, who has uh, more uh, um, or only positive interactions. But sometimes, uh, actually, quite often, we observe uh, that there are both positive and negative interaction between crops. Uh, but it's it's not an obstacle for. Uh, uh, designing polyculture system with this crop. So if we experience this situation when there are both positive and negative interactions between, let's uh, let's simplify, between uh, it's a um, uh, serial le legume intercropping. And uh, there is a competition, uh, legume, leguminous crop is uh, competing with cereal crop for water. Uh, but of course, it also provides nitrogen for the cereal crop. Are there any ways to combine these two crops? Maybe plant them in different time. Thank you very much, Helena. This is a good idea. You can design a double cropping system or uh, or rotation system. Uh, and uh, this is a separation between crops in uh, time. Uh, are there any other uh, idea? And uh, so uh, uh, there is one comment that you can add a third crop, which mitigates uh, the competition. Um, I mean that you uh, then in this situation you temporarily uh, spatially separate these uh, two crops with the third crops. Uh, uh, it, like for, for general situation, it's okay, but we also need to uh, consider what kind of interaction. If there is, uh, for example, facilitation for pollination or for biological control mediated by insects, it might work because insects are mobile and they could move on a certain distance. If this is for the nutrient transfer, then your example, unfortunately, your strategy would not work. Any other ideas? Yeah, so this is another example uh, of combinations, tomatoes and broccoli. But uh, any other ideas how to reduce uh, competition? not mix together those uh, crops who compete with each other. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Uh, but the, uh, of course, like if there are direct competition, it's only competition, uh, uh, then we won't mix these crops. But if there is also a positive interaction between them, how to explore this positive interaction? Okay, so then maybe like one idea, uh, like uh, one idea is temporal se uh, separation, which uh, you already um, expressed. And uh, another is spatial uh, separation, like what uh, was uh, already proposed in the chat. Uh, but uh, in case, for example, of nutrient transfer, it means that you need to harvest the mulch 
uh, not the mulch, but uh, the hay, let's say, uh, uh, from the uh, leguminous field and physically transfer it uh, to a cereal field. In this case, you will have a nutrient transfer. Uh, there is one very good example in agroforestry system when uh, uh, growers grow uh, um, uh, combination of cereal and legume uh, crops like with very uh, tall uh, stature so it's like very vigorous growth to produce a lot of biomass and they grow this mixture in alleys between trees if they would plant this behind the trees in rows of course like these vigorous crops would just suppress the trees but what they do they mow this uh, crops from early and they move this rich plentiful biomass in uh, under rows of trees and of course you can imagine that after such thick mulch you also receive very good pest control so basically uh, you produce uh, mulch next to your crops there are even uh, some mowers with a side um, the position of residues so basically just by just having this simple equipment you can uh, utilize this uh, system and uh, uh, do i have time elisa uh, i think so i mean yeah i i mean that like do, do i finished my first 45 minutes or i still have some time uh, you have another 10 minutes Ah, okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so then, uh, okay, then let's move to uh, 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 functions. How this uh, processes is uh, translated into uh, functions. I think that you already somewhere saw this uh, slide which referred to uh, phosphate um, uh, mobilization uh, by a leguminous uh, crop to a cereal uh, uh, the uh, mechanisms here is uh, uh, production uh, by uh, leguminous uh, the roots of leguminous uh, uh, crop carboxylates or uh, protons uh, to immobilize or make soluble uh, inorganic uh, phosphate or uh, uh, enzymes uh, phosphatases uh, which uh, could uh, release uh, for, uh, phosphate ions uh, from uh, organic uh, residues uh, Apart from uh, uh, the roots itself, uh, an important role in uh, phosphate um, mobilization plays uh, mycorrhiza uh, because mycorrhiza has a very big uh, surface area. Uh, and um, uh, even uh, there, there is uh, an information that uh, 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 mycorrhization uh, from uh, genera diversis poraceae uh, is uh, particular uh, efficient in uh, phosphate uh, mobilization. Uh, so th this is facilitation. Another uh, 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 way uh, approach uh, to uh, uh, phosphate uh, uh, nutrition is uh, niche uh, partitioning, where you combine uh, uh, crops uh, uh, that explore uh, uh, different uh, uh, layers uh, of uh, soil uh, or that use different uh, chemical uh, form uh, of uh, uh, phosphates, for example, citric acid leachable phosphate and uh, water uh, leachable uh, phosphate as in case of intercropping uh, white uh, lupin and uh, wheat. As for uh, uh, other um, micro elements, uh, uh, here cereals plays a role in mobilization of them such as iron in, and zinc by uh, excretion of phytosiderophores. Uh, as for uh, nutrient cycling, uh, uh, nitrogen cycling, I think that you will uh, all well know uh, about the role of uh, uh, leguminous uh, uh, crops, but maybe not all of you know that nitrogen fixation in a number of leguminous crops are improved uh, through uh, mycorrhizal um, 
colonization. And also mycorrhiza itself uh, just improve nutrient acquisition by uh, crops uh, from uh, soil. Uh, also, uh, uh, nitrogen can be transferred to some um, level uh, uh, during the intercropping phase where both crops are alive uh, by uh, uh, the composition of uh, senescing uh, roots and uh, nodules or after uh, the death uh, of uh, leguminous uh, crop after uh, the composition of uh, its uh, shoots and uh, roots. Uh, and of course, there are not only leguminous crops who do nitrogen fixation. Uh, even some native varieties of maize are capable to uh, fix uh, uh, nitrogen. Uh, as I already pointed, that in legumes intercropped with uh, cereal, nitrogen fixation is higher than in monoculture situation. Uh, but also application of inorganic nitrogen with fertilizer may uh, suppress uh, nitrogen fixation and nodulation by uh, legumes and also may create situation where uh, cereal uh, uh, get uh, uh, benefit and overcompete uh, uh, legume crop. Uh, so, um, uh, as uh, also, uh, uh, it's important to interplant uh, uh, crop uh, with uh, shallow root systems uh, uh, or combine crops uh, with shallow root systems, which can efficiently mobilize uh, uh, phosphorus uh, localized in uh, near surface soil uh, layers. And uh, crops uh, uh, having a deep uh, root system, uh, as in uh, deep layers, uh, there is more stocks, uh, let's say, more, uh, higher pools of nitrogen and uh, water. Uh, of course, not only uh, crops itself uh, play a role in nutrient cycling, uh, but it may be even more important is the role of uh, microflora, microfauna, mesofauna, uh, and uh, macrofauna in the, uh, mineralization and in distribution nutrients across different uh, soil uh, layers. Uh, actually, microorganisms, they can uh, also be influenced by uh, crops components and you should consider the effect of your crop on the microbial communities and later on the effect of this enhanced uh, microbial community on the second crops. And the main me uh, uh, me mechanism of microbial use is uh, nutrient supplementation, uh, regulation of plant hormones. They can either synthesize hormones or then they can also degrade some plant uh, uh, hormones. They can produce uh, uh, toxic alkaloid against uh, herbivores, uh, and they can uh, secrete a number of antibacterial and antifungal and degradative uh, enzymes. Um, a general strategy to uh, increase uh, uh, soil biodiversity is to reduce tillage and to place uh, more crop uh, residues on the uh, surface. This can also lead to uh, uh, growing uh, the uh, rate of uh, fungal uh, microorganisms, soil microorganisms towards uh, uh, bacterial uh, uh, fauna, soil fauna. As for the pest uh, control in uh, uh, conservative agriculture, in uh, agroecology, we use uh, preventive methods rather than uh, curatives. And our uh, so-called conservation biological control is focused on uh, creating habitats, uh, creating uh, uh, resources for our beneficial uh, uh, organisms, but also increased connectivity of different uh, habitats that uh, um, our beneficial organisms can su survive uh, despite of uh, um, harmful agronomic operations, or they uh, can uh, also migrate from uh, like natural and semi-natural uh, habitats to our uh, fields. And the main uh, uh, mechanisms is uh, association uh, resistance uh, uh, hypothesis or hypothesis association uh, when uh, uh, 
uh, we just create very complex uh, systems with a lot of textures, smells, colors, and it's uh, uh, just uh, uh, non-host plants and it's just confusing for pests or uh, disease cannot spread that uh, quickly. The second is uh, enemy uh, hypothesis when we encourage our enemies, as I already uh, mentioned. And the third is the trap crop hypothesis, where we hypothesize culture manka, where we combine uh, uh, plants uh, which uh, repel uh, uh, our pest uh, and also uh, plants which attracts pest, often in combination. I will show you actually here on this slide. This uh, system uh, is uh, uh, called uh, push uh, pull system or prevabluce with vaguevalna system when we uh, plant uh, repellent uh, crops uh, which uh, repel uh, pests inside uh, our uh, cash crops and uh, attractive uh, plants uh, plants attractive for our uh, pest outside uh, on the borders of uh, our cropping systems uh, so that our main crops uh, become more uh, protected uh, but also we uh, we always select our, the, so this basically uh, service crops uh, and we try to select these service crops uh, in a way that they provide some uh, beneficial functions in addition to pest control. So for example, they can be used as a feed for our um, cattle or as an ornamental plant or uh, some additional vegetables or spices. Uh, so there are some main uh, groups of plants used for uh, pest controls. These are insectary plants, which provides pollen and nectar uh, for uh, herbivore predators and adult parasitoids. Uh, this is uh, repellent plants uh, uh, that uh, repel our pests. Uh, Yes, uh, then this is attractant uh, plants or uh, uh, trap crops, culture uh, monkey. Uh, I hear someone's microphone. If you can please mute it. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, or oh, Sebastian, can you please mute someone? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, this. Uh, um, uh, uh, repellent uh, plants, uh, they uh, ca cause herbivore to uh, fail to uh, uh, locate uh, uh, the um, uh, host crop. Uh, then uh, uh, there are uh, attract um, decoy plants, which uh, cause uh, in, uh, increased uh, per, uh, pest mortality or uh, reduced uh, fecundancy. And finally, uh, there are also uh, nursery uh, plants, uh, which uh, uh, support uh, alternative uh, uh, prey for this uh, host. So for example, there is one example from um, um, uh, agroforestry system where you uh, plant the um, uh, uh, cover crops uh, which host aphids, uh, but these aphids uh, are not um, predating on your main tree crops. Uh, uh, and these aphids appear earlier in season than aphids on your main crops, which means that your predator can has an opportunity to build its uh, population before the pest appears. So now I finished with this uh, uh, slides. I don't know if someone is writing in chat. Uh, I just need to warn that I don't see uh, what you write. <laughs> 